life as life as a farmer was was demanding. It was you know a real challenge. Required you to work hard, you know, invest as smart as you could, but with limited funds, you could only do so much. You uh, you kept equipment running far past uh, times when it was safe to operate, simply because you didn't have the money to replace. Every farmer in this area wanted to do better. They, they wanted to be able to farm differently. Dad was getting older, Grandpa was older. This was the only way that I could see staying in the dairy industry and still, still continuing. There just wasn't the amount of income needed to, uh, to farm the way you really wanted to farm. Oil and gas changed that. Dairy farmer in my whole life. I, I grew up on the farm. I, you know, I helped my father all through school. You know, got out, thought I was going to, you know, maybe do something else. Was quickly drawn back to the farm. I just, I just liked that lifestyle. Up at three thirty or four in the morning, milk cows. As soon as you were done milking, there was always field work, buildings to repair, fence to build, equipment to repair. Did that, milk cows again at night. You start at five, done by seven, 7.30. Maybe did some things after that. So, you know, very short nights. Uh, it's very rare to get more than five hours sleep a night. So back in 2012, we realized one of our, our bigger competitors uh, in Pennsylvania, you know, wasn't as present, and that was Chesapeake. And so we asked the question, you know, where were they going? And, and we figured out they were looking at this new shale play in, in Ohio called the Utica. And so we started uh, evaluating the prospect. And for about a year and a half, we spent studying all the, the geology, the well results, getting to know the landowners. And, and that's where we first got introduced to Larry Kane. What I first noticed about Larry was that he wasn't there representing himself. He was representing his entire community. It was around 20 to 30,000 acres of landowners, hundreds of families that have put his faith in him. And that's a tremendous responsibility that he took, took. And I know that he was very serious about making sure they got the best deal possible to benefit the community as much as they could. Uh, that was a common bond that, that really kept us anchored as we were going through the negotiation. And so I picked up the, the, the phone and called him probably the same phone call that he got, you know, probably 30 times within that last week was uh, oil and gas companies interested in talking to him about unlocking the potential of his oil and gas reserves. We said, sure, we talked to everybody. <laughs> so, uh, you know, small room at the local uh, Farm Bureau building. I think we had our first meeting in February of 2011. We attended probably three of these. And I, I say we, it was neighbors, uh, farmers just like myself. We would attend these at a local restaurant or a, a gathering house someplace. Um, started everything from there, but our original group starting then was for education purposes only. We did not talk about how much money we could make, whether we would even lease as a group. We just wanted to educate ourselves. Toby came in, gave us a nice presentation, 12 wells, 30 employees, very proud of his company. As you can imagine at that time, you know, we were around 40,000 acres, Crown was going for $5,000 an acre, you know, do the math. These guys probably can't afford this deal, but you know, we appreciate you coming and talking. Past that, we both had questions about each other. Um, Larry's probably asking if, if Rice Energy had the ability to take a 30,000 acre package. And I was probably thinking, does this guy even have 30,000 acres in his group? Um, so there was work that we needed to do to understand each other a little bit better, but at the very heart of it, um, was coming up with a deal that was gonna benefit from not just ourselves and our companies, but the communities that we were gonna operate in. It was an, an uneasy feeling because we'd never had people come in and offer us that kind of money to sign a document. And a lot of people didn't understand what they were signing away. And uh, we needed to know more before we as a group was willing to sign that. I remember when, you know, him telling me that when Kyle and he left, to go back to uh, to their office in Pennsylvania. He told Kyle, he says, there's no way those guys have 40,000 acres in the middle of this play. And um, 
We stayed in contact, sent them some, some parcel numbers, some, some mapping information. He said everything fell right into place. And so for, the, for over a year, we, we kept in touch, shared stories, um, scout reports. And, and that was something that impressed all the companies in Rice also, that we worked hard at having accurate information. And, um, and our, our landowners group, I think there's, a, there's something to say about um, the ability to negotiate something just on someone's word. And uh, we felt we had that. And in the end, we proved that we had it when, when people actually came and signed up for the company that we recommended. And that was the way we handled it is we recommend that the group signs with Rice Energy. Larry gave me a call and told me that the committee had come to the decision that transacting with, with us was going to be the best option for his group of landowners. Uh, it was a sense of relief and, and excitement, but also um, knowing that now the real work begins and you know immediately thinking about all the things that we needed to do to be able to deliver on creating great results and, and creating a great partnership with uh with these you know over a thousand landowners there's a huge relief <laughs> you know, we finally, finally got there. We were all a strictly volunteer committee, you know, taking time out of our day from be it dairy farming or a guy in the group or in the committee that was also a dairy farmer, much younger man than myself and had kids in sports, uh, had another couple that um, run a, a produce market, a farmer's market. So everybody had other jobs to do besides this, but it consumed a lot of our time, required a lot of time, and we were committed to, to seeing it through. And um, whenever we finally did that, it was a welcome relief for the committee and also the, uh, the group. I think the first well was probably about a year after we signed. Uh, it took about that amount of time to get everybody signed. Um, then Rice went in the permitting process to permit their first well. It was a little over a year when the Bigfoot well was spud and drilled. And then um, very soon after that, Others started to follow. Rice had, had a very detailed plan laid out from the start as how they could drill up all those acres in, in you know, kind of a short amount of time. He took this, these dollars and reinvested this back into his farm. So, you know, farming on this property, you know, he's been doing, this family has been doing it for generations. And over that period of time, they built up a list of things they would, they would like to do, but never had the ability to do. And it was amazing to see them finally have the opportunity to start doing all of those things that they wanted to do. And what he's done with the farm is absolutely amazing. about the robotics. Devin knew more than I did uh, from his contacts. Uh, he's very much a cooperative type person too. He served on the board, served on our councils, on our milk marketing co-op, and had met a lot of people that had already incorporated robotic milking on the farm. And I always said 20 years, a lot of people think that's too long, where you need to, to do something major every 20 years to ensure that the farm is there for the next generation. And um, it was, it was at that 20 years or more, and you know, a decision had to be made. The, the facilities we were milking in were, were wearing out, um, and we, we needed to look at doing something to ensure that the dairy operation would continue into the future. And robotics was something that, that I had heard about, and Devin knew more about than I did, and we knew we needed to take a look at it. Now that we put robotics in, it's, it's totally slow paced and we're not pushed to get the milking done and then get field work done and then get back to milking. We just do what we have to do in the barn and, and then go out and, and do other things that we put off for a long time and then go back to the barn and do our night chores. Dad would call and say, hey, you need me? I said, nope, got everything covered in the barn. He'd go off and do stuff that he wants to do. 24 seven 
are being milked and they're being robotically fed. We also have manure collectors. The last thing that we implemented and did that earlier this year, put two collectors in, basically our, our vacuum collectors. They, they follow a, a route design at the barn and uh, picks up the manure, takes it to a point, dumps it, goes into storage and it goes back to its charging station. This is all what they call a free flow system. Cows eat when they want, they lie down when they want, they get milked when they want, they go out to pasture when they want. And um, once again, I think we've automated as many different tasks as any other dairy operation. I don't get up as early. You're not getting up and down underneath the cows. You're, you're not exposed to a cow injuring you. Um, you're not out there as late at night. I, I think that's, uh, that says a lot about a family farm. I, I think you have that responsibility <clears throat> to ensure that that continues. And that's basically where I'm at now is making sure that continues, whether that's being able to purchase more land in the future, um, making sure that we're efficient enough, we're, we're profitable enough uh, that, uh, that future generations will be able to, to continue dairying. If you drive around the area, You'll see new barns, you'll see new tractors. Um, most of the farmers invested back in their farm and that was my father and I's both thinking was the farm's what gave us this. We should invest back in the farm. Yeah, it, it feels great. You know, I, I think everybody wants to make an impact on the world and, and we certainly want to want to change the world. Um, and, and while back then at Rice Energy, we weren't, um, at a size where we could change the world, but we can change the world around us and change the world of the people we touch. And this is a great example every day, creating these leases and these partnerships with landowners allowed us to make their lives uh, better and, and was really the higher purpose behind what we were doing. We weren't just trying to get oil and gas out of the ground. We were trying to, to share the successes and, and create real opportunities for people that really deserved what to expect in the future, you know, you're gonna have the same dedication to trust, being a great partner, doing what you said you're gonna do, doing the right thing always. But what you will see is you're gonna to continue to see the application of newer technologies. You know, when we, when we worked on Larry's farm, uh, we were using conventional equipment, now we're fracking with jet engines. Um, and so you'll continue to see us bring more and more technology to evolve the way that we operate so that we can make a, ba a, a greater impact on the relationships that we form and bring even greater benefit to the society of the world that's demanding, you know, clean burning, sustainably produced natural gas. That was an interesting story and, and a, a lot of people wanted to be a part of that. And uh, I, just, I just enjoy the people. You know, to say the money's secondary, I think a lot of people kind of laugh at you when you say that, but uh, there have been a lot of good relationships built out of this. And you know, I, I think every day about you know, how special it is to be a part of this, be it uh, a mineral owner in Appalachia that uh, was able to, to pull together one of the best landowner agreements and, and now to have wells that are producing gas at these volumes that not only is helping this area out, but has helped the nation out and helped the world out. And, you know, we're, we're a small part of providing the entire world with a very affordable energy source.